Welcome everyone to another observability clinic, Google Cloud Platform Observability with Dynatrace. This is an update from July, 2022. We have so many cool things that are coming in all the time. This is why we're adding a timestamp to it. I'm not an expert in GCP, but I do have a colleague who is an expert. He's actually driving the product innovation around our GCP observability. Michael, thank you so much for being here with me. Maybe can you introduce yourself quickly to the audience? Sure. Uh, my name is Michal Nalajinski. I'm a senior product manager in Dynatrace, uh, working on public cloud observability for a couple of years now. So I'm focusing on AWS, Azure, and GCP. And we're here today to talk about GCP. Awesome. Great. And you are, it's actually really cool that you're covering kind of all of the, uh, the cloud platforms so that we have a unified feeling and a unified um, kind of uh, observability approach uh, for it. So Michal, today, GCP, the way this works, please, you know, go ahead with, uh, you know, giving us an insight on what this is. I know you have a lot of live demos. I may have a question or two. Uh, and folks, if you're watching this and if you have questions, please go to university.dynatrace.com. There you can also learn more. Go to community.dynatrace.com. You can ask more questions. You have our names. I'm pretty sure you'll figure out how you get a hold of us. And also never be shy to use the in-product chat if you want to talk with somebody from our Dynatrace One team. But now, Michael, I'm interested to see what's the latest and greatest as it comes to GCP monitoring with Dynatrace. Okay, let's start with what we are actually going to cover today. We'll focus on our observability for Google Cloud Platform, how to set up it and how to use it, but also uh, on how you can utilize our new unified analysis screen to actually analyze the particular entities of your GCP uh, objects, uh, functions, Bob subs, and, and multiple others. So this will be the, the two key learnings for, for today. Mm -hmm. Cool. We're monitoring GCP Google Cloud Platform for, for a while now, and we're monitoring it with different approaches. For the full stack, we are using one agent whenever it's possible. So like Compute Engine, App Engine, or Kubernetes, this is all being monitored with a full stack visibility with one agent for a long time now. Then we also are using open telemetry for code level visibility for Google Functions or Cloud Run, so those serverless instances of Google Cloud. And then for multiple other services, we're using um, metrics and logs monitoring with our GCP integration. I'll be focusing on the integration today because one agent or open telemetry are widely used across different, uh, different uh, clouds and also on-prem on -prem developments. Currently, we're supporting about 50 free services that you can monitor from Google Platform into Dynatrace. Cool. In particular, uh, we are visualizing the data that we're ingesting from Google Cloud Platform into the predefined dashboards. So it's not that we just get the data into Dynatrace, but we already have the dashboards for you as presets that can be used as a stepping stone into your own uh, crafted dashboards. Um, and also, we're prov pro providing those entity screens. Uh, this one is uh, for, for Google Cloud Function here, actually, that are combining the key metrics and key properties of those instances into a, a predefined view that, of course, can be adjusted because this is what our unified analysis screen is actually made for, for adjustment and comparison of different metrics um, within, within the scope of one instance. So then how to set up the Google Cloud uh, Platform Monitoring? Uh, there's a short web, web documentation page on how to create it. But what I think what the most important takeaway from, from it here is that we are using very standard components. We're using GKE Autopilot and we're using a hand package that you just need to download and run. Of course, we have a configuration with the permissions that are needed, but this is the standard stuff. And we're basing that on the well-known mechanics that allow you to run your stuff into Google Cloud. So if you're already a heavy user of Google Cloud, using of GKE Autopilot or the HAN shouldn't be a problem and should actually provide you quite nice experience on how we do ingest data from Google Cloud Platform into Dynatrace. But let's see how that all works in, in reality. Let me switch to, to my, to my, uh, to my uh, environment here and also tell you a, a little story. Uh, I think this happened somewhere in January. Uh, we, were, uh, we were working on some improvements for GCP. So the team were, was trying different, uh, different cases and different, different improvements. And then we were notified that 
uh, we're exceeding our budget in GCP, which usually doesn't happen because those budget limits are quite, set quite high. Um, so immediately we looked into, because we, we are basing that on, on the function that is running within those uh, those GKE clusters, we immediately looked into, <clears throat> into the dashboard for the function. And we realized that most of the functions has about one, uh, one active instance uh, on average per hour. But one of the functions, uh, we're, we're having about uh, 1,500 active instances, like concurrent instances within within that hour. So immediately you real, realize that something is, is, is happening with, with that function. And here from the dashboard, we can actually switch directly into, into the entity screen, this unified analysis screen, and we can see that particular function in context of different metrics. Actually, execution time wasn't very surprising. This is 20 something milliseconds. Uh, even the memory usage here was quite stable, but the number of executions and, and active instances, so the concurrent uh, usage was something that was actually alarming. So when we knew the, the name of the function, we knew the developer that created it, we contacted them immediately, and we realized that it was a deployment of that function that actually created some recurrency. Uh, so this function was running itself because it was connected with logs. And this was the immediately the result of, of increasing the, the active instances uh, level. So uh, what we can do here with that, we can actually create an um, create, um, alert on that. And we also have some alerting already bundled within our solution. So if you start monitoring GCP, um, GCP um, Cloud Platform, you will get a predefined set of alerts, probably not actually for the active instances, but for multiple other services that you can enable by default. So it was quite easy for us with uh, self-monitoring using Dynatrace to spot that problem and actually act upon it quite quickly. And that's, a, that's a cool story. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, but sure. um, first of all, it's great that we obviously, we internally at Dynatrace, we use Dynatrace to monitor our own activities, right? It's, we always call it, uh, you know, drink around champagne or read our own dog food, but I think that's great. And uh, the other thing is, and I just want to reiterate because I've done other clinics before on the unified analysis screen. So folks, uh, the screen that you see here is really the one that you'll see more and more uh, across the product. It's really a consistent feeling and a consistent way of how you can interact with the data. If you want to learn more about the unified analysis screen, also check out some of the other previous recordings. But in general, Michael, I really like it that um, we have all of these metrics out of the box. And as you said, there's some alerts already predefined, but other than that, you can then also say, Dynatrace, you want to be alerted on certain things that are actually relevant to the way you operate your software. Right? Yes, definitely. And it's for all the clouds, we have this vision that we need, we cannot start with an empty page, empty list of metrics or empty list of alerts that we as Dynatrace need to guide the customer view into that observability and how to use it. Uh, because we have, hear that from our customers that especially when they embark this, their journey into GCP, um, it's, they have a kind of scarce access to the GCP experts. So Dynatrace is kind of a platform that allows them to have the common common denominator of observability between AWS, Azure, and GCP. I'll also mention that in the future when I'll we'll be talking about our plans. So I was talking about dashboards, and we have a large list of dashboard presets for uh, Google uh, Google uh, Cloud services, different services with different setups. Let's let's see maybe this one and the one for PubSub uh, for different setups per. Um, per particular um, cloud function using the metrics, not all the metrics, but just the selected metrics that are most relevant into the performance of a particular particular service at its instance. So this is a cloud storage, for example, and we also, maybe my browser doesn't like me. Yeah, let's focus on the storage then. Uh, <laughs> and we're selecting, we're working with those services, we're selecting them. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, so this is what I wanted to show you in terms of the on the on the on the demo. Let's go back to the presentation, and let's uh, let's talk about what's next here. Because for Google Platform, we want to provide an inventory overview. So the overview that is similar to the views that we have for Azure and GCP, but of course better already. So this will be definitely based on the. Um, unified analysis screen will be combining all the benefits of the unified analysis screen into the overview of cloud platform. It will provide some summary of and statistics per, uh, per region of your instances and some kind of the environment dynamics that we already know from Azure and AWS. 
And also lists of instances will be also accessed from, uh, from another place. So from the, this overview screen, you can already do that from the Netflix Explorer, from dashboards, but we also want to provide that, that list uh, from, from within this overview. So this is the one thing that we're planning in quite near future. And the other one, maybe in, in, in a midterm um, horizon, is to monitor health and availability of the cloud provider itself. And especially for GCP, uh, it's been more and more relevant as GCP is uh, committing to their SLAs quite, uh, quite strongly. But our customers, you need a way to monitor that SLA, in fact, whether those services are really available. So Dynatrace wants to also step in into that, that space and actually provide cloud health events within Dynatrace as a root cause uh, for, the, for the analysis of the problems that usually Dynatrace detects. And maybe the, the, the reason for that problem is the unavailability of the cloud provider. And then you can create a report on that SLA or SLO uh, within cloud provider. Can I ask a quick question here? Uh, because sure. this is extremely also relevant for some of the work that I've been doing around site reliability engineering, the whole concept of SLAs and SLOs. So if I understand this correctly, we are pulling cloud problems. So let's assume if Google or any of the other vendors has an issue, a known issue, we are then forwarding this information to our customers into the environment, letting them know that there's currently an ongoing problem in the infrastructure of the cloud vendor. And that could potentially be the root cause for, let's say, a performance degradation of the software that runs on it. Is this right? Exactly. And this is especially important because if the root cause is a problem at cloud provider, you will apply a completely different remediation strategy for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for root cause in your own uh, environment or if you, in your own code, remediation is, is replacing that, maybe rolling that back. But, but if the root cause lies in the cloud provider, maybe you need to apply a different strategy, like a different geolocation, maybe even use another cloud provider as a failover mechanism. So I think this is quite important for our customers to understand the real root cause behind the problem and then apply different remediation strategy, strategies be, uh, depending on, 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 on what is actually causing the problem. Mm -hmm. Very cool, that's nice. And that's uh, things that people have asked in the past. Like uh, if we can pull in this information and it seems we're doing this, this is great. And another thing that, that, that we are, are planning here and I'm already was talking about that, we really want to have a unified, unified multi-cloud overview. So these days customers are running their, their, their workloads in one, two, or maybe even three clouds, including some on-prems or private clouds. So we actually want to provide rather functional or application-based view than just the cloud siloed view. Because maybe your databases are stored in AWS and GCP for geographic reason, reasons, you know, to be closer to your customers. But then you also would need this cross-cloud view per function or per, 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 per resource type that we want to provide here. And this will also um, allow customers to switch in a more seamless way between clouds like AWS or, or, and GCP without um, some deep experience with Dynatrace and, 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 and how to use Dynatrace. So this is something that we want to be unifying and we'll probably start with, with, with technology overview. And then based, based on what we actually are doing now for GCP, for Google Cloud Platform, we want to uh, shape the our uh, our unified multi-cloud overview based on based on GCP, as I just said. So this will be probably used definitely. This will be sorry, the problem. This will be definitely using our unified uh, analysis approach because this is the future of how we present data in Dynatrace. Okay, mm, questions or follow-ups? Because I yeah. think this is all I want to show here. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a great update. Um... I got a couple of questions. Um, so if I understand this correctly, if I'm new to Dynatrace and I want to use it for GCP, the only thing I need to do is I need to use our GKey autopilot uh, integration that is then installing uh, a function in GCP that is then pushing the data to Dynatrace, correct? Yes, exactly. So the, the way that we constructed GCP is that it is using our open API. So this again uh, uses the, the flexibility and openness, let's say, of Dynatrace ingesting the data. And also it's a in full control of the customer on how the data is being transferred into Dynatrace, mm -hmm. um, which we believe this is, 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 is the future of how we'll be doing things uh, across, across different clouds. Mm -hmm. Cool. And uh, as you also mentioned, uh, a lot of the standard capabilities we provide in any 
cloud provider or even on-premise is done through the one agent. So folks, if you're interested in full stack observability with the one agent, with distributed tracing and everything we do, there's a lot of other videos out there. Also, you mentioned open telemetry is something we support as a first class citizen. So that means you get all of the distributed tracing from open telemetry and as open telemetry is expanding to uh, logs, metrics and uh, events, you can be sure that we are also there and covering all of these things. Um, Michael, uh, thank you so much for this quick session. It was a nice quick overview and I'm pretty sure I'll have you back because I know a lot of cool things are coming up. So I want to have Definitely. you back later in the year. Thank you. Thanks.